Tenants in common is for anyone. You don't have to be spouses. And there's no survivorship. There's no survivorship. If you kind of want to think of it like the opposite of tenants by the entirety, well, that's a good way to think about it. So let's just say that person A and B own a property together. Different people than the prior example. And, you know, one of the ways that uh, this would be very common would be in business, for instance. Let's say that they own an auto body shop together. They're business partners. They're not spouses. They're business partners. And uh, for whatever reason, one of the business partners passes away. Uh, who will the new interest group, uh, uh, ownership group be? Uh, think about that for a second. If one of the parties passes away and there's no survivorship, let's just say B passed away. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's just say B passed away. There we go. Um, who is the new ownership group? Well, now that I've given you plenty of time to think about that, it would be A plus the heirs, or heirs, if I was to use my Boston accent, it would be A plus the heirs of, B, of B. A plus the heirs of B. Uh, tenants in common. Tenants in common. Think about it. If you owned an auto body shop with some business partner of yours, you might like your business partner, and you might be really good friends, but if you got hit by a bus... Would you want the share of the auto body shop to go to your business partner, or would you want it to go to your family? Probably your family, I hope. And uh, so that's how tenants in common works.